and welcomes you to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. After a massive week one win, Florida is feeling it. This is the swamp. And when they've got it going good here, uh, folks, you know there are a few places in college football more energized. Tonight, we've got a sold out and then some crowd packed in to see two ranked teams under the bright lights. We got the Gators with newfound chomp. We got the talented Kentucky Wildcats. They beat Florida a year ago, and they're hungry to do it again. Kentucky has one of the most physically gifted quarterbacks in the country. Big Will Levis, he's intense, smart. Many believe he'll be a very high NFL draft pick. Florida has their own version of that, with perhaps no ceiling to be seen. Anthony Richardson creating big buzz, and the fans in the swamp, they want more and more and more. We welcome you to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Subway. It's the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. As we say good evening, everybody, Joe Tessertor, as always, with my partner, Greg McElroy. And Florida, all of a sudden, <laughs> is the it team in college football. From unranked to, oh, wow, what a difference a week makes, right? You get that win against Utah. Head coach Billy Napier is now trying to pump the brakes just a little bit on all the hype. Yeah, I mean, he's leading the train in regards to, hey, guys, don't eat the rat poison, <laughs> right? Because all we've heard all week is just how gifted their quarterback is, just how talented this team is, how ahead of schedule they are. But Billy Napier really charged his team to focus on where they can improve. Look at how many mistakes they made. Yeah, they won, and it was a great win. It was a gutsy performance to make enough plays to get the W, but they can play so much better, and that's been the focus throughout the course of this week. And Katie George, Coach Napier, has a lot to smile about with his young quarterback. Yeah, he does. It's hard not to test when your starting quarterback plays the way that he did last Saturday, especially when you consider he's inexperienced. Last season, he completed just 33 passes. He played in like 220 snaps, and when Billy Napier arrived in Gainesville, Richardson was coming off a of knee surgery, so he didn't see him throw the football until the first day of spring. Napier said, when I finally did, that was the best night's sleep I got in a long time, because this kid, guys, has all the tools, and more than that, he's a gamer. He elevates his play the bigger the stage, and boy, does he have a big one in front of him tonight, Tess. And with all this quarterback draft hype on the line we bring in Todd McShay and Todd he turned home last week coach Napier and said son go out there and win this game and they love the way he responded yeah, he's the most intriguing prospect in the entire draft class whether it's 2023 or 2024 the size that he has with the combination of mobility and the arm strength is unique I'm talking Josh Allen Cam Newton but what I watched last week was some some progress inside the pocket making decisive decisions seeing the safety here he knows the second that that safety inverts he's got to get the ball out and then you see the laser of an arm and even on this 45 yard touchdown run he knows he, he gets alerted to man-to-man -man coverage he sees the corner go back over cover the middle of the field then he has the boy to run he's not taking off early he's doing it because the progression progression read led him there we need to see more progress like that but i'm telling you Tess. There is no ceiling for this guy. He is an absolute physical phenom. Top 10 Utah team found that out last week, Todd. And now Florida's all of a sudden the number 12 team in the country. Billy Napier said, I love the chemistry. We stuck together. When we come back, it's that guy, Kentucky's main man. Will Levis is mic'd up. Just what is he saying before this big game? You'll find out next. the SEC on ESPN. Like Kentucky's been a reliable, steady winning team in recent years. And a lot of it has to do with what they have seen recently with Will Levis, their star quarterback, wired up. You know what I mean? Who thought? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good seeing you, Good brother. Good to see you, too. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wait your turn. Huh? Wait your turn. There should be no nerves. Oh God. No go. nerves. We're ready. We're ready. You earned this. I watched Scarface last night. Yeah. Call me Jack. I did. Brrr. Be nasty. Yeah, Let's I got go. You. Come on. Nasty yeah. attitude. Let's go. After the game, when we win. That's a man prepared to play in the most hostile road environment of his career. Last season, he played on the road at South Carolina, at Georgia, at Mississippi State. 
He was even thrown in as a redshirt freshman at Ohio State. He said that was loud, but he understands tonight's going to be different. The Swamp, 90,000 fans, a group coming off of a big upset. Levis told me, you got to play clean and you got to be efficient tonight, Tess. My man said he watched Scarface last night. Nothing like a little Pacino to get your SEC blood boiling. Kentucky won the toss. They elect to defer. So Chance Poor will kick away to Weston and Henderson. Number 20, number 12, getting at it at the swamp. There's Weston as the coverage is able to get to him at the 18 yard line. You know, Greg, it's interesting. We talk about Anthony Richardson in such a way because he had wow moments even last year. But then you remember, it's just his third start. Guy hasn't played that much. 33 career completions coming in the last week. The tools have always been there, but advancing and understanding what it's going to take to be successful. We know he can run. We know he can throw. His footwork has been a work in progress. He looks more confident with that this year. And Billy Napier, the play caller and head coach, has done a great job of infusing him into an offense that looks very simple on the surface, but very difficult to prepare for. So those rushing numbers last week against Utah, he was impressive there. Going to start on the grounds and not much there, just a gain of two for Naquan Wright. And you see Jordan Wright with the tackle. He is back from a suspension. The senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, in the middle of that Kentucky defense. A big point of emphasis this offseason for Florida is get this offensive line playing better. And times in the last couple of years have gotten by with the run game using smoke and mirrors. Now it's about flat back and imposing your will at the line of scrimmage. It's going to challenge Kentucky all night long in the trenches. Second and eight, Richardson on the slam, gets it complete to Justin Shorter for a Gators first down. Great job there by Richardson, throwing into the pressure, getting it out just in time. 16-yard completion. Richardson, look at the time to wind it up, go downfield, but well beyond Xavier Henderson. A great job on that play before the last one. It's a run play called inside, but you're going to see pressure come right there, which allows Richardson to throw this slant right behind the blitzing linebacker. A good job there by Richardson getting it out in time, giving it just accurate throw enough to allow his receiver to make a play on it. Ricky Pearsall, the receiver in motion. He's the transfer from Arizona State. They're very high on sprint right for Richardson, running out of space as he was forced out that time by DeAndre Square, who's been elected the team captain three straight seasons for Kentucky. It's going to be very important for Kentucky's defense to communicate properly. They're going to see a lot of different formations. They're going to see a lot of different motions. So recognition and communication at the second level on the road will be a huge point of emphasis for Brad White's defense. Right will motion out. Empty look here on third and ten. First third down of the night for Florida. Richardson with time downfield but high and beyond Justin Shorter. Just missed that one. Anthony Richardson just a touch high. It's the correct place to go with it. A good job by Shorter crossing face. Usually sometimes early in the game, you're all fired up. You're all jacked up. Your adrenaline's rolling. So you can occasionally, especially the first couple series before you settle in, the misses are often high. Tavion Robinson, who was number three in the nation, punt return yardage last year for Virginia Tech as Crawshaw punts away. And it's a good one as the fair catch is at the 16-yard line. So now, Todd, the star quarterback, Will Levis, gets his turn. Robinson. Will Levis, to me, he's a first-rounder if he continues to progress. That's really where he's come from. One season as a starter, but every scout you talk to and every coach you talk to, first thing they say is his FBIs, his football intelligence, off the charts. He's mobile, he's strong, he's got a big arm. I'm interested to see tonight, because we saw last week against Miami of Ohio, pressure was on him all night long. Can he speed up the clock, get his protections right, and hit on the easy throws? Last week, 300 yards and three touchdowns in that win against Miami of Ohio. 
They'll go with a short pitch, and this is smoke. Cavassier smoke on the carry. Let's look at the Chick-fil-A impact players. For Kentucky, Kentucky on offense, Cavassier smoke. In now that Rodriguez is suspended still, he's going to have to be huge at running back. Tavion Robinson, what a star this guy might become. A great job last week in his debut after transferring over from Virginia Tech. And then Florida, it's very simple. Brent Cox has to provide that edge presence and Ventrell Miller at the second level. Back healthy, he's the heart and soul of this defense. He's going to have to follow the ball wherever it goes. I mentioned Chris Rodriguez, the all-SEC running back, missed last week's game as well. Levis on second and nine, trying to spin free, but he is torn down by Jervon Dexter Sr., the big six foot five, 312 pounder in the middle of that defensive line. Trey Dean also coming up defensively for the Gators. How about this play right here by Brenton Cox? Watch him push the right tackle. Coming off the ball, explosive. Here working against Flax, he just throws the right tackle right into Levis and destroys that draw play inside. How about the edge defender? He literally chucked a six foot six, 330 pounder. Third and 10 for Levis. He goes with the screen to Brown. Brown goes nowhere because Ventrell Miller was darting in. Back-to-back -back plays, the Chick-fil-A impact players making a statement. Cox throws the right tackle into Levis on the QB draw, and then Miller sees the screen, gets out in front of it, beats the lineman to the spot, and drops the wide receiver for a loss of yardage. Just an excellent sequence there by the Gator defense. And now a chance for great field position as Colin Goodfellow is punting from within his own five-yard line. A knuckler to Henderson. And it'll be just shy of midfield. And that is where Anthony Richardson and the Gators will start from when we return to Gator Country, Gainesville, Florida. Greg, everybody wants to make an Anthony Richardson comparison. Well, yeah, mine's simple. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I grew up a Texas Longhorn fan. And my heyday as a college football fan was about 2002 until 2005. The guy I see is Vince Young. He's actually got a little better, more compact throwing motion than Vince Young, but the fluidity with how he plays and just how he extends plays and gets vertical when he runs the football, I think they are so eerily similar, especially early in Vince Young's development. Completed his first pass of the night for 16 yards, then 0 for his next three. Now this, first down with time, diving effort is complete to Ricky Pearsall. They're very high in the role he plays in this offense this year. Pearsaw is going to be huge. Very reliable, excellent feel for space. He does a pretty good job getting vertical on the seam routes. Goes for 24 yards. Now lofting it inside the 10, but beyond the outstretched arms of Justin Shorter. Pearsaw was such a big addition to this team. Look at them beat the defender inside. The corner can't quite collapse. Full layout, secure the catch. Excellent job there by the slot receiver. He led all the Gators receivers in last week's win against Utah. 67 yards in that effort. Montrell Johnson is the running back. The transfer from Louisiana came over with Coach Napier. Second and ten. We'll give to Johnson. Johnson finds a little something inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Gain of five. It'll be third down and five from there. Johnson was a bit of a surprise to me last week, man. How he can get north and south, square his shoulders. He can cut the ball back. Maybe not the home run hitter with crazy speed, but he's going to hit a lot of doubles and triples. That's according to the offensive line coach and offensive coordinator, Rob Sale. Really likes how this young man runs. Had a fourth quarter touchdown run last week. Gave him a three-point lead. Motion him out on third and five. And right up the middle, Richardson tried to go, but he was met immediately by Jacquez Jones. 
It was Jacquez Jones who sealed the win against Florida last year with a pass batted down in the end zone. He comes up with this tackle here on third down. You, you think these Kentucky defenders were told, hey, we can't let 15's legs beat us? Well, that's an example right there of Jones recognizing as soon as Anthony Richardson put that right foot in the ground, he was taking off in a draw. And as you can see, Jones collapsing in on it and making the huge play. Excellent job there by the Kentucky defender. And now the first career field goal attempt for Adam Mahal. It was three for three on PATs a week ago. This a 39 yarder. Good rotation, good ball contact, and through. So the five play drive with the short field ends up for three on the board for the Gators. Now, Stoops looking to make history tonight. And what a win it would be. And speaking of Bear Bryant, a little bit of a connection to our crew, Katie George. Your grandfather played at Kentucky for the Bear. Way back when, 1949, 1950. Just want to give a shout out to UK Libraries, Ruth in particular, for going through the archives to find this photo of my pa. He was a halfback. 160 pounds. I don't think he was breaking very many tackles, guys, but I know my grandmother is sitting in her living room in Springfield, Kentucky, smiling from ear to ear. And she should be equally proud that he then went from playing for the Bear to serving our country in the U.S. Army for three years. Well done, Pop. Let's go to the studio and Matt. Good evening, gentlemen. You know, where have I seen drama at Pittsburgh before? Nick Patty, fourth and goal, in for an injured Keaton Slovis to Jared Wayne. We're an extra point away from Tennessee and Pittsburgh being tied up on ABC. That's a fun one, and that's a big one for both teams that think they could have special seasons. There's one thing this crew's learned, though, is you don't take extra points for no, granted. He's <laughs> to tie the game at the end. Boy, what reactions we got all week long after what happened in New Orleans, huh? Well, Bell Wright is now the running back for Kentucky. They are without three running backs from the running back room tonight. Play action as Levis goes high but complete to Jordan Dingle. And his big tight end is out to the 44 yard line. This is really good misdirection. You got motion, movement, everybody, all the defenders for Florida working their way to the quarterback's right. And of course, you got Dingle crossing. Good job, too, there by Levis, holding him up, not throwing him into a collision, and a good first down play for the Wildcats. What a good-looking play by the new offensive coordinator, Rich Scandarello, who came over from the 49ers. Had a little bit of everything there. After the 19-yard completion to Dingle, they fake the pitch, they roll with Levis, and they drag it again and get it complete for 11 yards to Brendan Bates. So now the tight end's getting involved, as it's an 11-yard completion for the Cats. Tell you what's different about Kentucky is they can go four, five deep at tight end. Now Georgia can do that. Oh. You're about the only other team in college football that has personnel that's as deep as Kentucky is at tight end. Bates, and Upshaw, Caddis, and Dingle. And you see Cummings getting in there as well. This is a very deep tight end group that's featured in the passing game. The wide receiver, Tavion Robinson, is lined up as the lone back right now. And they'll go with the pitch to Robinson. And he struggles to find anything with the pursuit down the line. So Robinson, Greg, is the transfer from Virginia Tech. who had three seasons there, and he is impressed early with Kentucky. Yeah, all it took was about one snap last week to know he belonged. <laughs> took the first play from scrimmage, like 40 yards, and showed some of that open field ability. I mean, double check the tape. I thought Wandale was back for a second. But no, it's Tavion Robinson, just really an explosive young man that's going to be featured, according to his OC, a little bit like Debo Samuel was featured in San Francisco the last few years. Wondell Robinson, of course, the star last year, had 1,300 receiving yards, now playing for the New York Giants. They go on the ground to Brown, and Brown gets it to the 40-yard line. So back-to-back -back plays of putting it in the hands of the receivers on the ground, the tackle by Uman Mielin. Possible four-down territory here if you're Kentucky. So far early in the season, about four and a half quarters worth. It's been a passing attack that's really uplifted this Kentucky offense. So if you want to lean on the ground, you can. But no, you might have two downs to get it. Get to the 35-yard line of the Florida Gators. Look at big number 21, Desmond Watson, in the left defensive line there at 415 pounds for the Gators. Third down and five.
Here's Levis on third down. Gets it complete to the tight end Dingle again. Jordan Dingle, the redshirt freshman, the former linebacker who moved over to offense his second year at Kentucky after transferring from Georgia Tech. But just a great job out of the back of the end zone. I told you, you're going to bring pressure up here in the middle. Then Charles Miller's going to add, there's nobody to account for Dingle. It's right there on the outside. That's difficult to cover. Little option route by the tight end coming out of the backfield. Just excellent design there by Rick Scangarello. See, let us check in at the line. Right. Can't find anything at L. It was Miller with the tackle. View from the AT&T 5G Skycam. Best view in the business right there. Got over 88,000 at the Swamp. Second highest home winning percentage in the nation since 1990. Florida's gone 170 wins framed against only 32 losses at this spot going back to 1990. Second and nine. Levis gets swarmed and taken down by Justice Boone. Flag is down. Right in the middle of the field. And you're going to see the offensive. There's pressure inside, which means it's one on one outside. The lineman slides in, trying to block most dangerous, but it's one on one off the outside as Levis takes a clean hit. Number 12 on the defense. The previous play is under further review. Let's take a look. Of course, for targeting. We're going to take a look at this. He is obviously a defenseless player. And looks as though right there, when his defenseless player is a quarterback, you have to have an indicator. Do you have a launch? Do you have a crouch? Do you have an upward thrust towards the head or neck area of a defenseless player? It's really close, but it does look to me like Boone is coming upwards into the chin of Will Levis. I'd be surprised if this was overturned. Looked initially like he got Levis in the chest. That helmet got up a little higher than I initially thought. Remember the key language when it comes to the definition of targeting forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. Is it a defenseless player? And do you have the indicators and the forcible contact? After review, there is no targeting. Number 12 stays in the game. It's third down. There is no targeting. The sack and a loss of seven. What they basically decided was there was no indicator. There was no launch because it was clear that Levis was defenseless and there was forcible contact. But was there an indicator to initiate the forcible contact? Dead on, Greg, dead on. It's really close. But I think when it's close, I'm OK keeping the guy in the game. I really am. Does Levis have to miss a snap? Well, now his helmet came off. Because right? his helmet came off. He does. He's heading to the sideline. Of course, Kentucky could use a timeout here, too, to insert him back into the game. Deuce Hogan is the backup, the sophomore from South Lake, Texas. I like South Lake, Texas. Well, he went to Grapevine Faith High School. <laughs> South Lake, Carol. South Lake, South Lake, <laughs> 76092. He's the transfer from Iowa. So Hogan will trot on as Levis, his helmet came off. So it's a third and 17 after the sack by Boone. So welcome to the swamp. 
Deuce Hogan. Can't imagine they get too crazy here. See if he can't make this field goal a little easier by handing it off to be a conservative. And that is what they will do with Smoke, who is tackled right at the line of scrimmage again by Jervon Dexter Sr. He has been active early on. Great stand there by the Florida Gators defense. Very impressed so far here through the first 10 minutes of this ball game. Very impressed with what I've seen from the front. Dexter and Cox. Boone has made a play or two as well. So far, it looks as though this Florida Gator front has answered the challenge that's been issued by their coach all week long. They're playing aggressive football so far tonight. Good fellow on to punt after the defensive line did their job. Double zeros. Delay the play clock. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. That'll help them out and give Goodfellow a little more room to try to get it inside the 10 pin punt. He was number three in the SEC last year at nearly 46 yards per punt. This time just looking for placement. Anderson will settle in at the 10 yard line. Florida defense came up big right when they needed to at the end between Boone's sack and Jervon Dexter Sr.'s big stuff at 8 o'clock. Joe Tessitor, Greg McElroy, Katie George, and Todd McShay with you for Florida and Kentucky. Trevor Etienne, yes, that last name. Etienne, the younger brother, the former Clemson star. Anthony Richardson, of course, the blossoming star for Florida. You said Vince Young would be the comp. Coach Napier turned us yesterday, Greg. He said, I think somewhere between a little Dak Prescott and a little Cam Newton. Yeah, I mean, everyone's got a comp. <laughs> They're all just so effusive in the praise of what they've seen from this young man through three starts. Second and seven. Richardson. What a strike to Henderson. Twenty eight yards to Xavier Henderson. And a great job here trying to sneak his tight end Xanders out into the flat. He gets collisioned, stays with it, and finds a man on the outside. Great throw. And just getting it quickly to Xanders. Well, I asked Richard Chen for his comp, guys. He says he relates to Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson in the way that he can move with the football. But the quarterback he likes to study most, Aaron Rodgers. He said from the velocity, his touch, and the release, he says, I hope I can one day close deliver a ball like that. Well, if he does, he's going to be playing for a long time. <laughs> That's Coach a good Nader one. Coach <laughs> feels that he's going to be playing for a long, long time. They're saying that was incomplete. Here's the other part of this game that I think is really underappreciated, just how cerebral he is and how much freedom they give him at the line of scrimmage. ETN. Look at that wiggle. Reminds you of somebody? Gets out to the 46-yard line. Now, he's bigger than his brother was at the same age. Travis was 185 pounds when he was a freshman at Clemson. Trevor goes 217 here at Florida. Yeah, I'm very impressed with what I saw from him last week. I mean, just excellent burst, really good feel for space. And I feel like people don't realize just how fast he is. He gets to the edge so quick on opposing defenders. Richardson incomplete had something on it and it couldn't stay in the hands of Henderson. So the punt team is going to trot out there. That's a ball that's got to be caught by Xavier Henderson. It's a pretty good throw, just a touch high, but you really have a high standard for Richardson if you feel like that ball was a little inaccurate. But either way, one that his receivers got to bring down, especially on a critical down and distance. Robinson awaits the punt. Crawshaw's second of the night. Plenty of time to set it up and get that 
coverage team downfield and with that bring out the fair catch inside the 10 so that's a good punt 44 yards plus inside the 10 for Crawshaw. Hey next Saturday college football on ESPN continues and it starts at noon with Georgia number two team in the country. I think some would say maybe put a one next to their name who knows take it on South Carolina and at six o'clock it's Mississippi State LSU and at nine o'clock number 15 Miami faces number fill in the blank Texas A&M they did have a six but they got beat to App State today. Yeah, bad performance from the Aggies. Maybe a little look ahead, but either way, inexcusable knowing the talent differential that's on the field with them going against the Mountaineers. Keep it on the ground with Cavassier Smoke. Three yards for Smoke. Remember, Chris Rodriguez. One of the best running backs in all of college football. Second week that he has missed. Out for the season is also Ramon Jefferson. Found out this week he has a torn ACL. And Jutan McLean is not available. So three running backs are not available to Kentucky. It's Smoke, Wright, and Drennan who are dressed tonight. Second and seven. Levis gets it complete to Key. It's a good looking true freshman from Lexington. 16 yard reception for Dane Key. It's probably my biggest takeaway from week one with Kentucky was that I didn't realize they were going to be as good on the perimeter in their skill. Tavion Robinson, there was some tape of him, so I had a feeling he'd be pretty good. But Dane Key and what he brings to the position, Barry on Brown, what he brings to the position. They are really deep and talented. And wide receiver and Will Levis, he can exploit every square inch of this field because of how strong his arm is. He impressed him right away in spring as an 18 year old. Levis play action. They go with the crosser to Upshaw. They have been utilizing the tight ends very well in this first quarter as Upshaw brings it to midfield. That's a 22 yard completion. And Rashad Torrance is down for Florida. Starting safety who's been a very reliable and physical player in the middle of that Gators defense in the back end. You know Florida's defense been told all week long we got to stop the run so that's exactly what Ventrell Miller does right here and as a result the tight end works right in behind him. Look how quickly those Florida linebackers trigger. It allows plenty of space behind him to Upshaw. Just a great job of working the middle of the field off play action. And watch the end of this play as you see the head right there of Rashad Torrance against the knee of Keaton Upshaw. And hopefully he's okay. Big body tight end. You gotta go low because it's difficult to tackle those guys up high. But man, those knees are like violent, man. Hopefully he'll be all right. Rashad Torrance, who you talk to everybody around the program, and they will note his leadership and his mentality. You know, Kind of guy who's taken it upon himself to mentor the younger defensive backs. Kamari Wilson comes into the game for Rashad Torrance. Kentucky has 77 total yards. 76 are by way of the pass. Will Levis just went for 22 to Upshaw. That was their first play over 20 yards tonight. Secondary is tight. I might try one deep here off heavy play action. Here is the play action, but he doesn't have time because he is torn down. That is Amari Bernie with the sack. He had the game ceiling interception in the end zone last week against Utah, and now this. You got a freshman and a running back with a big time sell on the edge. So you're going to see Wright get lost a little bit too far inside, loses contain. Just a really poor job there in protection. Levis is working, think he's going to have the outside taken care of. Clearly, him and his running back just not on the same page in protection. And an excellent job there by Bernie dropping him for the sack made the big play last week the great play carrying over here into week number two two sacks tonight 
for Florida. They set up the screen on second and 20, and Wright is cut down. That was Jadarius Perkins with the tackle for the Gators. We brought Todd McShay here because we have NFL draft buzz among star quarterbacks. And yet you go out and you play the game and what do you get? You get defense. You get good old fashioned, hard tackling, sack hunting defense. Three zip, Gators on top, ranked versus ranked, prime time in the SEC, end of one. All that orange and blue here at the Swamp, where their defense already has three sacks of Will Levis, the star quarterback for Kentucky, who's now facing a third and 20 to start this second quarter. Dexter gets free in the middle. Levis has to flush, takes a hit, and has to throw it incomplete as Antoine Powell Ryland closed on him. So far, this Florida defense is applying a ton of pressure to Will Levis, and this retooled offensive line has yet to answer the challenge. They're going to need to also because Will Levis, when he has a clean pocket, he does a tremendous job, very accurate, really sees it. But when things get a little bit muddy, that's when he kind of comes back and becomes much more human. Looks like a timeout is going to be used by the Gators. And we will take that break after Will Levis threw his first incompletion. It was 7-7, seven of seven, and now Kentucky's going to be punting, isn't it? They are rocking and rolling tonight. Colin Goodfellow on to punt for the Cats. Fielding it is Henderson off the bounce, spinning his way to the 25. Let's check in the studio and Matt. Okay, Tess, I have your All-State Mayhem moment. It is a final in Pittsburgh. Took overtime. Hendon Hooker tied 27 all to Cedric Tillman for the touchdown. Volunteers take the lead. Pittsburgh has one opportunity left. Fourth and goal. Nick Patty in for an injured Keaton Slovis. Falls short. Tennessee holds on to win. They go rocky top in Pittsburgh. It's a good, solid win for Tennessee, Greg. Yeah, I hate that Keaton Slovis was lost. Hopefully, we get good news on him. But that's a good pit team and an excellent win for Tennessee. And now Anthony Richardson back out there as he gives to Wright. And Wright is gobbled up that time by Jalen Geiger. Jalen Geiger who became a starter last November. From the military family. He's a big part of that back end of the Cats defense. Brad White, the coordinator, he's in his fourth season at Kentucky. Formula's been simple through the years of the success recently at Kentucky, right? Had a good, solid defense, be able to run the ball. That's it. Now you add in an NFL prospect quarterback, and they think <laughs> something dynamic could happen this year. Richardson on second and ten. Oh, and he had Justin Shorter streaking. Just way off the mark here. As you can see, pressure coming off the left hand side, unblocked defender. And for whatever reason, I think he thought Shorter was going to go outside. Shorter goes inside. Just way off the mark there between the quarterback and his wide receiver. Michael Tarquin, the starting right tackle, is being tended to by the medical staff as they're looking at that left leg. So we'll take a break while they tend to him. So much respect on the recruiting trail, Greg. That's got to bode well for Florida moving forward. It is massive. I mean, he has unbelievable support at the high school level, not just here in the state of Florida, but in the state of Georgia, which is insanely talent rich. So those relationships with the high school coaches will be huge for recruiting down the road. Third down and 10. They bring pressure, gets rid of it to the outside and complete. Great arm talent and a great route run by Justin Shorter. Ripka was coming after Anthony Richardson, and he was able to make the completion. And with it, it's a first down for Florida. Great anticipation here 
from Anthony Richardson. He releases this ball to the far side of the field, throwing a speed out to your left, one of the most difficult throws. He makes it look easy. They go with the tap pass. And not much there. As Bowman was tracked down the line, and right now the concern is Geiger as he is wincing in pain. See ya. Flag is down as well at the 35 yard line, so we will check on that. Right now, the concern is for Jalen Geiger. Mark Stoops right out on the field with the medical staff and his player. Personal foul, blindside block, number 15 on Florida. 15 yard penalty, it is first down. That's the first penalty of the game on Florida. And the penalties on Justin Shorter. 15 yard penalty. Let's take a look and see if we find it here. You see number four on the top of the screen. Right there, went in there, made a huge collision. It's close. And that's Geiger, the defensive back. He was down. Hopefully Geiger's okay. Obviously means so much to that back end. And it's a leader on this Kentucky team. Well, they're going to bring the medical cart out onto the field for Jalen Geiger. And with that, we will take a break. Everything you guys have to say coming up at the half. Well, it's been a very interesting day and already an interesting night. With some of the results we're seeing coming in. First and 25 after the penalty. Richardson incomplete. It was off of Ricky Pearsall. Another tight throw there by Anthony Richardson. Felt like he got it enough on the body that that's one that Pearsaw should have. Let's take a peek at it. Off play action. Good job by Pearsaw settling down. That ball is just on him. Tries to catch it underhand as opposed to locking it up one that the receiver should absolutely bring in a lot of velocity on that throw though he can bring the heat Danny Anthony Richardson second and 15 empty look they pick up the pressure and he goes high over Pearsall the third and 25 that's one you just got to have I mean guys wide open in the middle of the field similar play to what they ran about five or six times last week here saw right over the middle as you can see Anthony Richardson the numbers right now not glowing you can see there's still parts of his game that need to come along it's got all the skills but just refine the craft a little bit hone it in on the accuracy from time to time Going to give to Naquan Wright on third and 25 as he's going to be forced out by DeAndre Square. I think some of the things, too. I mean, the way I would say, I mean, Anthony Richardson's like giving someone a Ferrari on their 16th birthday. You know, it's exactly. like just so much horsepower, but yes. probably not the best idea. You know, right. learning how to drive and things like that, probably the right way to go about it. It's in there and it's so close to being a beautiful, beautiful thing, but there's still just little tweaks that he can make throughout the course of this season and beyond that will make him a superstar. 
Davion Robinson gets driven back to the 25 yard line and then shifts back to the right and makes the most of that return to the 33 and that'll bring out Will Levis the Madison Connecticut native you say well, wait a second a small little New England state is producing an SEC star quarterback who's going to go on to the NFL well Steve Young came from Greenwich Connecticut and then there was just up by 95 our very own Dan Orlovsky from the Valley of Shelton right now one of the best quarterbacks in college football also a top NFL draft prospect is Tyler Van Dyke who played at Suffield Academy boarding school and then Xavier High School in Middletown produced Will Levis who grew up on the shoreline in Madison comes from a family of Ivy League athletes mom was a star at Yale his uncle David was a star at Yale grandfather coached at Brown and here he is in the SEC and here he is getting it to Upshaw again. He has been targeting those tight ends. Yeah, he has. Similar play to what he started with last week. Roll to his left. It's a long throw. He gets it out there pretty easily. You see how he flips his hips. He's such a natural athlete. It's so hard to do that, to be honest with you. But he makes it look easy, that's for sure. been very sharp has really taken advantage of all parts of the field most everything's been underneath so at some point you're going to try to rock them to sleep and throw it over their heads three drives three punts so far only one drive that went into Florida territory rides the play action has plenty of time to crank it up and go downfield and into the end zone for a touchdown to the freshman Dane Key Will Levis how about Touchdown to Key. On the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Let's see this catch. Does he secure it? Wow. How about the high point? That is definitely going to stand by Key. His Kimbers is draped all over him. Ooh, does it touch the ground there on the side? Difficult to see. It didn't see that initially from the first angle. Let's take a peek. Let's see. Watch the ball here. Watch, Watch the point right of the ball. There, left side of the thigh. Of course, the ball can touch the ground, but you have to maintain possession, and the ball cannot wobble whatsoever upon contact with the ground. And it's really close. Let's take a look left side. Difficult to tell exactly where it is right there. Remember, ruling on the field is a touchdown by Key. Let's bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin. Matt? Yeah, Joe, I, the, the key, as Greg said, is it did the ball hit the ground through the process. He definitely has it up high. He takes a handoff. It looks like it slides down his leg. You, you can't catch the ball with your, with your legs. It has to be with your hands. But I, I don't see any proof here that the ball did hit the ground. So right now, I would expect the call to stand. So since it was called a touchdown on the field, I just don't think there's enough indisputable video evidence to overturn. You have to have beyond all doubt. And Matt, like you said, I, if this was called incomplete, I could see it also standing. But since it was called a touchdown on the field, I'm not sure I've seen enough to justify it being overturned. Well, either way, let's just say this. Kentucky has something in Dane Key. After the, true review, freshman. the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. I mean, this is the first true freshman as the touchdown is secured to start an opener at Kentucky in 19 years and when we met with the offensive coordinator Rich Scangarello the other day he said he was here in the spring as an 18 year old Greg and he said I never thought he was a freshman this is, he could handle it he could process and play right away there's an incredible catch right there too I mean just draped by Kimber the defender and the strength too for a freshman to be able to reel it in so impressive. Seven to three Kentucky 
after the 55 yard touchdown Levis to key coming together moment presented by Verbo Kentucky has been killing Florida on these over routes so you know these safeties they're starting to jump well what do you get over the top a big post as soon as that free safety comes down and takes the underneath you have one on one on the outside let your guy make a play just really good coverage by Kimber. There's only so much you can do. It's like a big guy on the block going up for a rebound. Yeah! Reel it in. And the freshman puts his name in the box score after the outstanding throw by his excellent quarterback. Levis to key. Dane Key is six foot three. He's a big target. He's fast. He's dynamic. He's got ball skills. Todd, that's the reason why people like Will Levis. What we just saw right there. Yeah, and every, everyone you talk to, from their coaches to quarterback coaches that have worked with him to NFL scouts, they all say the same thing. The first thing you have to know about him is his football intelligence and his understanding of the game. Right there, the, really the first half, the story's been about his patience, taking the easy stuff underneath, being more accurate today with the easy stuff underneath. But when he got his shot, he delivered. Put that ball in a perfect place. You got to put room underneath it, and you got to give your receiver an opportunity to go up and make the play. So Kentucky, on their first three drives, they had 17 plays for 67 yards. Then on that drive, they had two plays for 67 yards. That's what arm talent can do. Football IQ. Rode that play action. Went deep. He did the rest. Sometimes you can just tell. You know, you can just tell when you're about to take a shot. You can just tell with the off. They break the huddle a little faster. There's a little yeah. more urgency. <laughs> you can just tell. So I said, I feel like a shot might be coming. And Levis made him pay. Let's see what the equally talented Richardson could do now for an answer. Well, this is 9 of 10, 143 yards and a touchdown. Richardson's 4 of 13 for 78 yards. Johnson catches a seam. Montrell Johnson. Big burst off the left side. He was the Sun Belt Conference Freshman of the Year for Coach Napier last year at Louisiana and made the move here to Florida. And a great job here by the left side of this Florida offensive line. They told us the other day, look, this guy's not the fastest. Might have gotten away with a little hole right there. Number 77, Ethan White got that left hand hooked. But either way, see Montreal Johnson not the home run hitter with speed but man can he get downhill and now they go receiver screen as Henderson doesn't have any room to wiggle free as Lovett made the tackle it's a great job huge surge As you can see he's not going to get away from you man just an excellent job there responding Kentucky secures momentum for really the first time in the game Florida comes right out on their first offensive snap and retakes it. Johnson had nowhere to go. He was met at the line of scrimmage immediately. That was Justin Rogers in the middle of that defense. Big 330 pounder lining things up. So far, Anthony Richardson's accuracy has just been the tiniest bit off. You know when he's at his best, though, throwing the footballs when he's on the move? Right here, you have the whole field to work with to your right. Maybe get him on the move, give him a run pass option, and see if you can't get one of these receivers in space. See if they can do that on third and eight. Orbit motion from Johnson. He looks that way, but goes against the grain as he was trying to get the inside screen, but couldn't get it as DeAndre Square was breaking up that play. And I'll tell you what, you can tell Kentucky's defense as well, Coach, man. I mean, recognition immediately. <laughs> the second they threw that orbit motion around, you saw Square, as soon as the quarterback hit his back foot, take off right in the direction of the tunnel screen just extremely well coached there defensively by defensive coordinator Brad White. Mahalik on for the 50 yard field goal attempt. And he puts it through from 50. 
So Mahalik, who had never attempted a college field goal prior to this game, comes in, hits from 39, and then blasts away from 50. This rotation perfect and over with plenty of room. 7-6 game here in the swamp. Cats on top. Kentucky on top. 50-yard field goal by Florida's Adam Mahalik, and he kicks away to Brown. And that gives us the chance to check in with Matt and the guys. All right, Tess, checking in on Texas Tech and Houston. Houston in overtime for the second week in a row. This time, Texas Tech gets the win. Donovan Smith takes it in. And a good win at home for them, 33-30, the final in OT. And out west, Caleb Williams to Jordan Addison. They're making this look easy against Stanford. Jerry Rice in attendance is like, that kid can play. 14-0. All that offensive talent that headed to USC and it's showing up early. Had quick scoring drives when we've had them. All three scoring drives tonight have been under two minutes. Levis, pressure coming at him. And as it's incomplete, he had a deal with a lot with Ventrell Miller. You know, guys, Mark Stoop said he was a player's coach before it was in vogue. Now you have to be, but he understood the importance of building relationships with his players years ago. Go back to his Miami days. He still has an incredibly close relationship with Ed Reed. He said it's easy to be demanding when players know you truly care and love them, and the players agree. They tell me it's easy to go to battle for a guy who's in the trenches with you. You take a look at the 10-year run that Mark Stoops has had. He has created that culture of believing. Second and ten. Levis, three-step. Looks to the right, looks to the left. Now has to extend and then throws it away of the third down and ten. Well, we spent time with Coach Stoops this week, Greg, and he said, listen, there is definitely a belief in this program. Everybody believes you're going to make the play. You're going to do whatever's necessary. There's that strong belief system that the positive outcome will be the result. Yeah, there are very few programs that taken on the personality of their head coach better than Kentucky. Blue collar, hardworking, and extremely physical and tough. That's everything that Mark Stoops is as well. Which is what you need to be for an environment like this. At the swamp, under the lights, facing a third and ten. Levis gets it out and gets it complete, and it's key again. And it is a first down, Kentucky. This is just a great job taking advantage of technique. You're going to see a press bail here by number 24, Avery Helm. But as he releases deep, it's hard to flip 180 degrees to cover his speed out to the left. So anytime you see that press bail and the receivers looking inside, and the defensive back is looking inside, that speed out is stealing a good job of pitch and catch by Kentucky's offense. They go with Tavion Robinson in the backfield again. The 187-pound receiver. This time they fake the pitch and roll Levis. But good coverage downfield as he has to use the legs for just a few yards. Justin Boone was staying with him. Remember, Boone had that monstrous sack earlier. And there have not been many that Will Levis has missed tonight. Good job making something out of nothing. But look at this. I mean, wide open across the middle of the field. He beats his defender. Levis just can't see him. Doesn't want to be late over the middle of the field, but there's nothing but green grass right on the Gator logo. As he could have found Harris crossing face. Could have been a big play there by Kentucky offensively. Second and six. Jervon Dexter Sr. got it. That's the first turnover of the game, and it's a big one. 
if you look at this, this cannot happen in protection. You got a freshman running back working against a fourth year junior in Brenton Cox. He's going to win that every single time. Great job by Cox attacking the throw and shoulder of Levis, but that's on the back, and that's really on the offensive coordinator. You cannot ever have a running back blocking their best defensive end. That's a mismatch the defenses salivate for. Just a great job of taking advantage of the mismatch and making a huge play. And now off the interception as is officially recorded and Richardson fumbled, gets it himself and spins ahead to get it to the 30 yard line. Jordan Wright who was on him. So officially they are saying that Jervon Dexter senior records an interception. Watch this fumble here that Richardson smartly scooped. Just a good job there picking it up make something out of nothing if you can but you can as you move up in the pocket try to keep two hands on it because those rushers that are getting pushed up field they can dislodge that ball with a pinky. It's a good job there though didn't panic just grabbed it get what you can. Second and six. ETN little brother. Trying to find something cuts back against the green inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. The Clemson star Travis Etienne off to Jacksonville. So mom moved to Florida. She said hey I can be there and see Travis. I can be here in Gainesville and see Trevor. His first college game last week went for 64 yards on only five carries Greg and there his his grandmother Marie and Danielle his sister. So the family's here the Etienne family. Look at how excited they are to see Trevor out there. Third down and four. He gets the call and he gets the first down and more. And a stiff arm ride inside the 15. First down, Gators. And look at Grandma. Marie says, I like that little Trevor. Watch big number 54, Torrance. Just moving the big body defender there for Kentucky. And how about the stiff arm at the end to create a couple more yards? But that was all made possible there by the offensive line of the Florida Gators, in particular, their right guard, Osiris Torrance, the transfer from Louisiana, who's the best offensive lineman they have. Only their second, third down conversion tonight. And now Richardson rolling to his right, looking at options, and the pursuit had him forced out. Let's go back to that big third down. Just watch. Watch Torrance here and watch how he secures this three technique defensive tackle. Just pushes him out. No problem whatsoever. Moves what was Octavius Oxendine to a 285 pounds. See that big strong left arm of Torrance. He's going to play on Sundays, man. He is physical and nasty. Second and nine. ETN off left tackle. Cuts and makes it in. Trevor ETN, the freshman, gives the Gators the lead. And Grandma is high fiving everybody in the section. Yard touchdown run for Trevor Etienne. And they're going to try to make this a seven point lead as they keep the offense on the field. Of course, it was a week ago against Utah that one of the wow moments of the game was a two point conversion. The eye opening pump fake spin move on the two point conversion by Anthony Richardson. But Trevor Etienne put that juke on Keydron Smith and went 12 yards into the end zone. Yeah, how about it right here? Working around to the left hand side, the little yada. <laughs> no problem. Send him flying, break an ankle along the way. Hit your head on the goalpost. Let's take one more look at it. Look how sudden. Da! Get up field. Pressed R1 right there on the PlayStation remote. He gets up field. As you can see, the reaction from his family. 
Just like his older brother used to do for the Clemson Tigers. His sister Danielle, his grandma Marie made their way here to the swamp. And boy, did they love that. You know, it's interesting. We were talking to Rob Sale, the offensive coordinator for the Gators. You talked to him, you asked him about Trevor Etienne. He said, man, his presence, the big lights just don't affect him. He's not affected. He comes from a small town, Louisiana, but he's fully <laughs> unaffected. That's what being a little brother is. You know, a little brother to a great player that came before him. He ain't scared, that's for sure. So here's the two-point try to try to make it a full touchdown lead. Richardson, play action with time, goes underneath and gets ETN. So it's all about little brother. Their phone's going to be blowing up. That ETN family's going to say, hey, Danielle and Marie, you're all over ESPN tonight. Well-deserved because of the true freshman. The great job, too, by Richardson, just being patient and understanding where his outlet was. There was nothing there, trying to work a big cross concept, but there's well covered. Check it down, give yourself a chance. It's exactly what he does. Kentucky loses track of the back off play action, and ETN gets in yet again. What a drive for that young man. Keep in mind, Florida went from unranked to, what did we say, oh, wow, to number 12. And now you look at the college football rankings brought to you by Goodyear, and there are L's there, Texas A&M, Notre Dame. So here's this red-hot Florida team. And can you imagine if you start the year 2-0 with wins against ranked teams? They go up against number seven Utah. They go up against... Number 20, Kentucky. We've got a lot of ball play, but they are off to a very strong start as the flag comes in. And this was a team, Greg, that you really consider where the program was. It was disjointed. Right. There was a coaching change. There were doubts. There's cohesiveness and togetherness now in belief, isn't there? Very much so. And, and I think a certain culture that mirrors what Billy Napier created over the course of his, his four years at Louisiana. They're tough. They're physical. They empower the offensive line. And I think that they really play with an edge. They do. This team, really, so far, what I've been most surprised by is just how good they've been at the line of scrimmage in the last two games, both offensively and defensively. And they're not going up against cupcakes here. We're talking about defenses that really pride themselves in the front seven defensively. And Florida has answered the challenge in some ways gone far beyond what any of us would have expected through two weeks. Here's Cavassier Smoke on the pitch. And Smoke gets it out to the 37-yard line, tackled by Uman Nielen. This is a big drive here for Kentucky, of course. Not quite yet thinking about the clock. Obviously, Florida, after the sudden change, right down the field score, this place is rocking now. Can you steal some of that momentum back and potentially steal some points without giving Florida the opportunity to steal some points of their own? Second and seven. They go with Smoke again, and he is wrapped up by that foot by Ventrell Miller, or else he had some big yardage ahead of him. Boy, Miller, the six-year player, had the season-ending injury last year, but what a team leader he is, Greg. Great play there, too. Making the play in the open field. If he doesn't make that play, there's a lot of room for smoke there in the open field. Big third down here for the Kentucky offense. Tavion Robinson's been quiet so far tonight. Let's see if they look in the direction of the talented transfer. As he's actually here in the backfield, lined up alongside Will Levis. Third down and six, Tavion Robinson. In the backfield with Levis, who has time and goes downfield, and it's incomplete. Dane Key was the intended target. I don't love that decision from Will Levis. It's obviously third down. Third down has to take priority. You get a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, that's great, but that's a low percentage throw. Instead, you have Robinson working on an angle route over the middle. Looked like you had some room to maybe squeeze that in to extend that drive. So 
An aggressive play there by Levis, one that I think he'd probably like to have back. A second three and out for Kentucky tonight. Good fibble on to punt. High snap! It's going all the way back to the goal line! Good fellow has to kick it out for a safety! There is not much you can do in a spot like Illegally that. Illegally kicking the ball on the punting team, number 94. That results in a safety. Colin Goodfellow is six foot two. He needed to be seven foot two. Smartly kicking it out of the back of the end zone, though, to avoid any further damage. But wow. So many miscues in the first couple weeks of the season in special teams. We've had this conversation for two weeks, haven't we? Uh, no doubt. Kay DeGraw is the long snapper for Kentucky. Colin Goodfellow is a senior from Cleveland, Ohio, and with that experience, he knew. Get this thing out of the back of the end zone. And he did. But all the special teams coordinators we have talked to said this is where the edge is early in the season. You don't get as many reps as you want in fall camp. Right. Everybody's coming together. There's constant roster turnover, the cohesiveness of units, of operations, all of it. It can be a disaster. Major disaster. We've seen it raise its ugly head on several different occasions already in the first two weeks of the season. Special teams coordinator saying, I just want to run and hide every single week. Just don't make a mess of anything. But clearly not the case these first couple weeks. Now, of course, after the safety, a free kick from the 20 for Chance Poor as Weston and Henderson will have an opportunity to give Florida excellent, excellent field position. This is Weston on the return. And Weston is met. Flag is down at the 30-yard line. All of a sudden, it's 16 to 7, Florida. There's the interception. During the return, holding on the return team, number 14. That's a 10 yard penalty. It is first down. You see right here, right in the middle of your screen, just rips down a member of the kickoff team with his right arm. I call that every single time. Hey, season five of True South is returning. It's tomorrow night on the SEC Network, 8 o'clock on the ESPN app. Great show. John T. Edge is going to go to a marble yard in Tompkinsville, Kentucky. Meet the locals, eat some great food, talk about Southern identities. That is True South. They do a wonderful job with that. Just over four minutes to go here in the half. Naquan Wright, not much in the middle against that Kentucky front. Here, if you're Florida, quarterback hasn't been super accurate so far today. So run the ball a couple times, maybe an easy high percentage completion. You get a first down, you get out past the 30, and you, then you start thinking about a potential two-minute operation to steal some points before the half. But you've dominated here in the second quarter. No reason to take any unnecessary risk at this part of the field to give momentum back to Kentucky. Gators got that momentum off Dexter's interception. Second and seven, Anthony Richardson shallow cross and met right away was Dante Zanders, who was originally at Florida as a tight end, then switched to defensive line, entered the transfer portal, but decided to come back, stay the course, and now he's the starting tight end. He's done a pretty good job, too. Third down and three. Three minutes to go. It's been an energized past few minutes for the Gators. Give themselves a nine-point lead. Richardson pulls it. Oh, and it's picked off! And inside the 10-yard line is Jordan Wright. What a play by Jordan Wright! And all of a sudden, Kentucky's in prime position. Oh, man, one that you just cannot let happen. Coming into the flat, you're going to see Wright come straight up field. 
kind of leak out a little bit underneath it, cuts it off, makes an unbelievable one-handed catch. That is incredible because that ball is coming with a little velocity too. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable play. And one right there as a quarterback, you got to negotiate the defender. Just a critical error. And at point blank range, at point blank range, listen, I understand a one handed catch when it's lofted downfield. Right. He's just a few yards away from Anthony Richardson on that play, and it's a timeout for Kentucky. 247 remaining before halftime when we get to Matt, Joey, and Jesse and a wild day in college football. Jordan Wright, who didn't play a week ago, was dealing with a suspension. Got the word in the last 24 hours he'd be in there, and he has made a big difference right now. First and goal, Kentucky. And that's one, too, as a quarterback. It just eats at you because you hmm. made that play in your sleep over and over and over again. It's a high percentage play. It's a good, safe play call. You got a guy open in the flat. You just don't see that defender sticking his arm out. He makes an unbelievable play, and now huge, huge sequence of downs here for the Kentucky Wildcats after they've had some life breathed right into their offense. And you bring out Big Will Levis looking like a Adonis there, ready to pounce on this opportunity with Cavassier Smoke in the backfield. First and goal, Smoke. He's wrapped up again as Miller got to him as well as Trey Dean, the always active safety been documented just how good of an athlete Will Levis is said it earlier in regards to Anthony Richardson you're on the left hash your quarterback's right handed roll him to the right get him on the move simplify the read and if nothing's there in the passing attack allow him to take it with his legs as you can see big blue wall struggling tonight but get your quarterback on the move here second and goal Levis play action man in his face as he just had to throw it away that was Trey Dean coming in like a missile and a flag is down at that point back at the 16 yard line. I think he was outside the tackle box when he threw it away. I would imagine that's exactly what they're discussing right now. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number zero, low hit on the quarterback. Half the distance, it is first down. A chorus of boos raining down here at the swamp, roughing the passer against Trey Dean and the Gators. As you can see, they're trying to protect passers by hitting them low. If you hit the quarterback low, they're going to call roughing the passer, but man. The quarterback's kind of on the move. It's tricky, Matt Austin, our rules expert. Yeah, Greg, the quarterback has to be in a passing posture. He is in this case, but the key here is it has to be forcible. It has to be forcible contact to the knee going with the arms. I don't think that meets the requirement. First and goal. Right. Straight ahead, driving ahead, and they're going to mark him short. I agree with Matt. I I just didn't, I mean, he's on the move, he's on the boot. Like, what do you want the defender to do? I mean, it's one thing if he's standing there stationary in the pocket, but if he's outside the pocket, I understand quarterbacks need protection, but my goodness, I mean, give the defenders a chance. So the celebration on the sidelines, the one-handed interception by Jordan Wright. And now you got the big guy opposite him in the middle, Desmond Watson at 415 pounds, stretching that number 21 jersey across that Florida blue when you're only a couple inches away. They're going to try to clog up that middle. It's always good to have a 415 pounder when you're playing goal line defense, <laughs> isn't it, Greg? Yeah. That's right. You can play with 10 guys on defense when he's in there at nose tackle. I think he is definitely it's exactly what he's recruited for clog the middle of this defense. And I think it'd be wise for Kentucky to run away from him. You don't often have a lot of checks and adjustments at the line of scrimmage along the goal line. Only bad things can happen there. Maybe run away from the big body number 21 up front. When you think about Desmond wearing number 21, 
It was a Heisman winner who was about you know, 250 pounds lighter back in the day. <laughs> From one Desmond to another, we're in 21. All right, second and goal. Inside the one-yard line, Levis surges ahead. And that's a Kentucky touchdown. Raise your hands, Jordan Wright. He only raised one hand moments ago and made the incredible interception. And then Will Levis and the guys said, we've got it from here. The one-yard touchdown run as Kentucky takes advantage and cashes in off the turnover. A good surge there. Initially, it didn't look like he was going to get there, but you see Levis kind of twist off to the end, extend it beyond the goal line. Where is he down? Yeah, he's definitely in. You want power, you got 6'3", 232 pounds. That was a bad snap again! And now they're calling fire with the holder. And that is batted away. So another special teams miscue. There was a bad snap for a punt that went well over the head. They had to kick it out for a safety. And now a bad snap here on a PAT. Oh, it's definitely low, and it's the same center, DeGraw. You know that last one where he shot it over the punter's head. That's in his head, 100%. That ball's low. Decent job there by Poor, trying to make something out of nothing. But, but that Chance ball's Poor's low and inside. Specialist. Yeah, I mean, he's not your quarterback. I mean. So think about the sequence as to now how we have a three-point game. It was this spectacular inception by Jordan Wright. It's just an incredible play. I, mean, I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, yeah, in a perfect world, you'd love to say, well, you kind of float it up over the top, get a guy to buy, give him a pump fake. There he is as he's celebrating, knowing that that touchdown was courtesy of the excellent outside linebacker, Jordan Wright. You know, the Wildcats are happy to have him back. That was a huge sequence as all the momentum was on the side of the Gators. He took it right back. Now, a three-point game going into half for the moment. Here's ETN in the return. Freshman had a touchdown and a two-point conversion earlier this quarter. Let's go to the studio. Matt, what do you got? All right, guys, coming up with the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. The top 10 was absolutely wild today. We'll show you highlights. That was Alabama. They escaped to the Classic with Texas, and we had walk-off win. On those days when they say the schedule's not great, beware. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway joining me coming up with the Mercedes-Benz. Thank you, Matt. All right, what was your quick read on Bama today, Greg? Very sloppy. I mean, extremely sloppy. We're, we're not the better team today. Won the game, not the better team. Texas, they got to be kicking themselves to enter inside the 10-yard line three times, only score six points. That's where the game was won and lost. It's red zone defense by Alabama. So they did enough to win. It was a gutsy win, but they have a lot to clean up in the weeks to come. Johnson will take the carry, and Johnson will be shredded down right away by Square. That was a good play by DeAndre Square. Florida doesn't have any timeouts remaining here. They have a three-point lead because of the safety and then the missed extra point to give us a unique 16 to 13 score. If I'm Florida, I'm, I'm not taking any chances. No. Quarterback just made a mistake, been a little bit, little bit off the mark tonight by his standards. So take it to half, regroup, have a good conversation, and get him feeling good about the second half plan, which should, if I'm Billy Napier, I'm going to get Anthony Richardson involved with his legs. That is what they will do with ETN as ETN is wrestled back. It was Jacquez Jones on the tackle of ETN. Jacquez Jones, transfer from Ole Miss. They played last year against Florida at the end to seal that win. Wins against Florida. Remember, Kentucky went 31 years without wins against Florida and then. Two wins in the last four years. 
And it was special teams on that day last year as well. That defined that game. We started slow with defense. Then the offense got pranks. A couple strange plays in special teams. Levis had the big pass to Key. ETN had the touchdown run. Turnover moments ago cashed in for Levis. Here's Katie with Coach Stoops. Thanks, Tess. Coach Stoops, wild first half, back and forth with the momentum. What did you think of your team's performance? Yeah, we, we've got to execute better. I mean, if, with all that being said, we're two snaps away from being tied. That's the good news. You know, we're, doing, we're making a lot of mistakes. We're beating ourselves in certain areas. It was nice to see the defense step up and get the turnover. We really needed that. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Coach Stoops' offense will get the ball to start the second half. It is number 12 on top of number 20, 16 to 13 lead. Let's get to the halftime report with Matt, Joey, and Jesse right now. Subway Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Ranked versus ranked, 12 versus 20. Florida here at home with a 16 13 lead over Will Levis and the Cats. Anthony Richardson has had his struggles tonight. Just 6 of 17, 84 yards, had that one interception. Kentucky will get the ball to start the second half. Adam Mahalik will be kicking away to the dangerous Barry and Brown, who had a 100-yard kickoff return touchdown to start last week's second half in Kentucky's win. Moments ago, Katie with Billy Napier. Coach Napier, there were some mental mistakes in that first half. What do you want to see cleaned up? Yeah, just throw and catch it a little bit better, a little bit more precision. Defensively, we've done a great job. We gave up one big play, short field after the turnover there, but it's got to settle in and play, right? Proud of the players, how they're competing. A little bit better execution, a little more detail, a little more, a bit more discipline. Thanks for the time. All right, thank you. Interception was an amazing effort by Kentucky's Jordan Wright gave him the short field, gave him the touchdown by Will Levels before the half, and now Levis back out there. Play action. As the umpire went tumbling down. Listen, Kentucky's sitting there with Will Levis. Right? They have 157 total yards. They have two rushing yards. Right. Kentucky's formula <laughs> in recent years is to have plenty of rushing yards. Very, they've abandoned who they've been, right? I, mean, I think a lot of it needs to go to the credit of the front seven defensively for Florida. They are winning at the line of scrimmage. Kentucky's retooled offensive line has really struggled in the first six quarters of this football season. But Will Levis has really carried them to this point. They need to find a way to create a little bit more balance. And if that means using your quarterback in the run game, that would be something I'd be open to as well. Chris Rodriguez, all SEC performer. He's out again this week. Have 99 yards to go ahead touchdown last year's win against Florida. Here is right, and there is nothing. And it's Shamar James with the tackle. And Levis has been feeling the heat. Sometimes the offensive line is busted, but they've also been overloaded in protection on a few different occasions, even when he's gotten rid of the football. Florida has hit him time and time again. This was the fumble slash interception. It was an interception is how it's ruled. But he has certainly been feeling it. In the clean pocket and on the move, he's been carving up this Florida defense. But when that pressure gets home, the accuracy starts to dwindle a little bit. And Levis starts to miss the mark. That was Brenton Cox who forced that interception that Jervon Dexter Sr. had him and Florida cashed in. This is third and nine. They're two for six on third downs. Four-man rush. They pick up the stunt. Levis doesn't have many options downfield. Has to back up. Stays up and then flicks it sidearm, but it's incomplete as he tried to get it to Lavelle Wright. But they were swarming at the end. Tyreek Sapp was coming in. And more pressure there as Will Levis is looking downfield. Doesn't have anything. Slides to his left. Good job there by Cox. Closing the gap. Leaping for it. Levis actually gave his receiver a chance to potentially catch the ball on the shovel to convert the first down. But either way, big play there by Florida. Remember, watch the snap here. Hey, DeBras had a rough night as the snapper. Put one over the head of Goodfellow. This was right at the hip as he gets it off. And Henderson is the return man from the 30-yard line for the Gators. Great coverage downfield. Special teams for Kentucky. Fighting Spirit brought to you by Modelo.
has really been about sudden change and the offense taking advantage of it. Here's the interception by Dexter on the deflection. ETN takes it down a couple plays later, jukes a guy out of his shoes and finds Pater. Not to be outdone though, Kentucky's defense making a play of their own as Wright reaches out, gives Kentucky the short field right before half as Levis surges forward on the QB sneak. It's really been about sudden change and taking advantage of that sudden change. So there's been a couple mistakes. A good job by both offenses capitalizing on the mistakes of the opposing team. Anthony Richardson gives to Johnson, and Johnson is taken down by Jacquez Jones. Second year at Kentucky, started his career at Ole Miss. Last year led the team in tackles. So far, Anthony Richardson, as Billy Napier just mentioned, he's been a little bit off the mark, just a little bit out of rhythm. Not missing by much, but missing by just enough for it to be incomplete. Got to make sure they get him comfortable here in the second half. Second and nine, Richardson, who's being pressured as he had Oxendine coming in off the edge. Octavius Oxendine. We're really looking for him to step up this year. Down and nine for Richardson and Billy Napier. Always got to be mindful of his legs, though, especially on third down when you're trying to rush the passer. He's got ETN flanking him to the left on third and nine. Four man rush. Pressure came up the middle. He gets away from it. But he can't get away from that. That Kentucky front with Jordan Wright. And Jordan Wright, who had the one hand interception. Before half comes up big here on third down. Well, Jordan Wright is spying Anthony Richardson. They know his legs are a huge problem on third down. So he is going to go wherever the quarterback goes. It's 15 on 15 crime right here huh. as he closes the gap and makes another huge play. Just a good job of using that length and dropping the talented quarterback outside the pocket. First Kentucky sack. First three and out for Florida. Crawshaw kicking away. Robinson driven back all the way to the 25 heck of a punt and Robinson can't find much trying to spin his way back. We just got a three point margin here in prime time in the SEC with a biggie on ESPN and a day in the league where Bama had a fight to the end to find a way against Texas. When AM lost to App State, Tennessee took care of business in overtime against Pitt. And now, number 20, Kentucky with the ball, trailing by three at number 12, Florida, here in the third quarter. Cavassier Smoke going ahead for a good play and a first down, a 14 yard run against that Florida defense. We're the first time all day long that Kentucky's offensive lines. Has moved the point, they kind of washed it all down right there. Ventrell Miller got lost. Cavassier Smoke, who's been quiet tonight, but definitely get plenty of opportunities. Going to need him too, as fatigue begins to play a role in this game. That's their longest run of the night. And we were just saying about typical Kentucky and the big blue wall offensive line in the run game. And 16 rushing yards, just got 14 of them there. Levis on first down bounces off the tight end who was in pass protection pump fake and then gets back to the line of scrimmage as he had Jervon Dexter senior right in his face. I think they're just going to have to continue to stay patient offensively if you're Kentucky there's not going to be a ton there on the ground that's Florida's defense has been excellent so far tonight against the run and the offensive line clearly for Kentucky still very much a work in progress but the play action passing game it's not going to work if you don't ever give them the threat of running the football so it'd be important for them to stay true to who they are and not abandon the run game just yet. Second and nine. Levis with time and off the deflection and into the hands of Magwood tip drill success 
First down, Cats. I mean, wow, right here. Coming off the wide receiver's hands, that's Harris trying to fit it in there for the squatting corner. Just right place, right time. As you can see, Magwood corralling it in. And a pretty big turn right there. Fortunate play there for the Kentucky Wildcats. The previous play is under further review. 29-yard reception for Chauncey Magwood, who had his first career touchdown last week. They're going to review this play. I think they're going to look for the spot here and see where they need to put the football. It's funny. I mean, you call that route. Magwood's responsibility there. He's a backup wide receiver. Run as fast as you can as far as you can. Mm -hmm. Clear. Oh, clear out. Clear. Clear it out. Like, you, you're not getting the ball. Right. Run it out. He didn't run far enough or fast enough. So, therefore, the corner falls off, almost makes the play, and there he is to catch the exactly. ball. That's one that you're going to put on tape on Sunday or on Monday morning when you get back to it, and you're like, and it's my favorite play of the game, but I also loafed on it. It's like one of those crazy. Yeah, but, but you know what? Here's what sometimes a lot of success in sports comes After down review, to. After review, it was right. a catch. Huh? The player's knee was down at the 36-yard line. It'll be first down at that spot. So we're going to mark him at the 36, all that extra effort. That's one of the coach, gonna though. He's going to get in there in the receiver room, and he's going to be like, Coach, you saw the catch, right? <laughs> and the coach will say, don't you ever do that again. But, yes, good catch. Excellent job. Good awareness. But a good job there. Reeling it in and trying to make something out of it. So with that, it is a first down at the 36-yard line. Officially, they'll mark it down a 24-yard reception. Smoke. As he makes his way to the 32, Demacia Smoke, who even with Chris Rodriguez, he did gain productive experience in recent years. Came in the season with over 1,300 rushing yards. He's rock solid as a one-two punch. Rodriguez gets back. Smoke is still going to get plenty of carries out of this backfield. Decisive runner that gets downhill. Tavian Robinson is now in the backfield. They have played around with this formation before. Uh, putting their star wide receiver in the backfield tonight second and six that's what they give Levis and they go with the pitch to the receiver who goes right up the middle for a first down your 187 pound burner on the short pitch to go straight ahead in the run game I really like this they pitched it he ran outside last time this time it's designed to go up inside if you look at where the offensive linemen are attacking they're attacking the inside edge shoulder of each defensive lineman. So that was a design cutback, just a beautiful job. And you see the explosiveness there from Robinson. Man, he can accelerate when he puts that foot in the ground. Rich Gangarello, new offensive coordinator. Liam Cohen left to become the OC of the LA Rams. Their third play caller in three seasons. Levis, play action. Incomplete as he was trying to get it to Magwood in a far more conventional way. And no, 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 says Avery Helm. Pretty good coverage there by Helm. Thought he might have grabbed the back of the jersey. Watch Magwood, the receiver, turning inside right there. I mean, you saw it. He does kind of tag that receiver. Watch, right hand. Boom, grabbed him. As a result, he closes on it. Official didn't catch it. Pretty lucky there, too, because if you grab a guy up around the shoulders, oftentimes that's going to result in the flag. Second and ten. Trying to run behind Dingle is Smoke, and he gets to the edge, and he's got a first down for Kentucky. Trey Dean finally runs him out. They brought in the big 267-pound Justice Dingle to go along with Cavassier Smoke in the backfield, and they went to the right side. And you're going to see Trey Dean jump to the outside and then come back in, lose contain. Watch the safety, number zero. Jumps to the outside, he's in a good spot. Then he chases inside and loses contain. He's a veteran safety. You cannot lose track of where the ball is. you got to stay wider than the widest. That time he loses it. And another nice play there on the ground from the Kentucky Wildcats. First and goal. Right. 
trying to slither his way inside the 10 and he does to the eight yard line. Kentucky's starting to find a little bit of a rhythm as Anthony Richardson looks on. What were you just seeing about Kentucky getting back to the run? You got to run? Gotta commit to it, especially early in the season. Fatigue is very much a factor the first couple weeks of the season as you're still acclimating yourself to football shape. Lean on those guys with a big offensive line and challenge them in the second half by going downhill. They just won their best five linemen on the field this week, mixing and matching, and they think they found it. Second and five. Again, right. Can he get to the corner? A stiff arm and no as he is gobbled up by Avery Helm. Great job there by Helm. Tracking it down, staying outside and wrapping up. Excellent job there by the corner. Third down. Swaps ready to roar. Kentucky trying to take the lead. Florida looking for a stop. Levis inside screens a no go. Brown couldn't hold on to it. And he threw it too far and too inside of Barry on Brown. And they're going to bring the kicking team on to try to tie this game. Just missed it here as Levis. Wants to work to the upside shoulder, get momentum going towards the end zone, but off the mark. Remember there was a bad snap earlier on an extra point. It's been a few of them from Cade DeGraw. Ruffalo on for the 24-yard field goal attempt to tie the game. Good snap, good hold, driven through by the veteran who's top 10 all-time in Kentucky scoring. And isn't that the way you like it in the SEC in prime time? All tied up in the second half. Let's get it. I watched Scarface last night. Yeah. Call me Jack. It did? <laughs> he watched Scarface last night, then he took this hit. And Will Levis actually has a Scarface, Tony Montana style <laughs> Scarface. A little Pacino was psyching him up to get ready for this primetime matchup. Look at that intensity. He's fun to watch, man. He really is. He's got such a linebacker mentality, you know? <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. He's fiery, man, and his team follows his lead. And good job by taking some of the pressure off of that last drive. Finally, the red game started to come alive for the Kentucky Wildcats. They're going to need it down the stretch. They had two yards rushing going into that drive, that field goal drive. They had 45 yards rushing on that drive. Ruffalo had the 24-yard field goal, and that's got us tied up here in the swamp. Well, guys, Billy Napier and Anthony Richardson spent a long period of time after Florida's last series over here on the sideline, just kind of had a meeting of the minds, trying to figure out what Richardson needs to get into rhythm. It's also important to note that these two have grown very close over the last eight or nine months since Napier arrived. Napier said, when you know the person, you know which buttons you can push and win. It was a very calm conversation between the two of them. Let's see if they work something out. Greg, he's not having a great night. He's 6-18, the interception only 84 yards. But I will tell you this, they trust in each other. Last week, he said, go win the game. He said, it made me realize my coach, my team, everybody trusts me. These are the spots where you need that belief. You need that faith. You need that trust. SEC rank versus rank all tied up second half. Richardson. Trying to use those legs, but he's pulled down from behind. That was Saunders. And the crowd didn't like the look of that. No, they didn't. They're going to want. He's kind of pulled down from behind. And then a little collision there at the end as well. They thought maybe horse collar and then going up to the head as well. As Ajun is closing in on him. Second and eight. They swing it to Henderson. Henderson made the first man miss, but he couldn't get past Tyrell Agent. 
And that's how you get a quarterback back into the ball game, though. Just a high percentage completion. Get him started. And now you make a third down a lot more manageable. And if he's not throwing it real accurate when he sets his feet, get him moving. Get him running. Allow him to be the best athlete on the field, which he's always going to be on any field he steps on here at the college level. One big man quarterback looks on, the other one faces a third and three. Richardson against a three-man rush. They drop eight, and he gets it complete for a first down to Ricky Pearsall. Good connection, Richardson to Pearsall. And this is really nice. Watch how he negotiates this defender who's sliding out underneath the curl. Excellent job by placing the football. And now he's going to try to run it himself, and he goes ahead to midfield. Just a gain of about three and a half there. And that was a confidence-building throw. Throw it around a defender. Now you follow it up with the quarterback power. I like the sequence there from Billy Napier. Billy Napier, who has talked about his team's fight, said they got a different edge about them. That's the one thing he knows for sure. Watch on the ground for Richardson tonight. Last week he dazzled everybody with his big long touchdown run against Utah. Second and six. Right. And make for a third and a long three. In this spot. Third down critical yardage. I'm always thinking players over plays more than anything else. Billy Napier knows that he trusts Ricky Pearsaw more than any other wide receiver on this team. He'd be the guy I would design a play for in this spot. He's right there in the slot up top. He's been the go-to guy in the third down. He's the most trustworthy of the bunch. Let's see if they find something for number one right here in the slot. On third and three. Orbit motion again with Henderson. They keep it on the ground with Wright, who gets the edge, and a little more, and it's a first down for Florida. J.J. Weaver made the tackle, but it goes for eight yards and a first down for the Gators. A little tempo now. Florida starting to feel it offensively, trying to carry some momentum from one play to the next. Empty look for Richardson. Oh, that is danger! Oh, my! Kedron Smith cuts inside, and he's going to pick six it in the swamp. Cat scratch fever Smith! Smith with the pick six. And you're going to see a little cloud coverage right here as Kedron Smith's eyes are into the backfield. You have a hitch called, but a hitch converts to a fade if you have a squatting corner. Right there, he's thinking that Wright's going to be on the hitch. He wasn't. He went deep. And as a result, Kedron Smith had the easiest interception of his life. These games come down to crucial moments. Will this be the one? We got a lot of ball to play. But this moment right here is the biggest we've seen so far tonight. Kedron Smith, pick six, the cut, the glory, and 65 yards into the end zone. One finger up for Coach Stoops. Calm, cool, collected, and his cats have a touchdown. Sold out in the swamp. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Todd McShay, Katie George with you. 23 to 16. Kentucky on top after the pick six. A reminder tomorrow on Sunday NFL Countdown. Before the Bucks and Cowboys square off one on one with Dak Prescott. Plus all access with Devontae Adams. Sunday NFL countdown at 10 Eastern. Then it's the 53rd season of Monday Night Football and a big welcome to Joe Buck and Troy Aikman carrying on the great tradition of Monday Night Football and what a storyline with Russell Wilson returning to Seattle Broncos Seahawks 8 Eastern on ABC and ESPN. Anthony Richardson back out there following the interception. Greg you just said I've thrown it. It doesn't feel good. I've <laughs> no, thrown that interception. I've thrown that pick squatting corner trying to throw a hitch. It converts to a fade. It happens to the best of us. Johnson 
Going off a right tackle. Makes a good cut and a second one for a 13-yard gain. Hey, Todd McShay, we spent time with Billy Napier yesterday, and the one thing he brought up with Anthony Richardson is he could use time. Yeah, I, listen, we all forget this is just his third start, and you've got to have, be patient with him. But I want to see what he does now. That's the big key. Well, here's what they do on first down. They just go ahead with two yards with Montrell Johnson. You know, we do forget because he's so talented, and he got off to such a good start, and he has all these highlight plays. The third start of his career, he's just learning how to play the position. And listen, yeah, there are 21 scouts here in attendance and from 15 different uh, – NFL teams, including Joe, Schoen, uh, Joe Shane, I should say, from the New York Giants as the general manager. They all want to see what Richardson could do, but this is about Florida, his development, their season. This is a big drive for Richardson, in, in my opinion. It's going to happen. Let's go here in the third. Second and eight, off a of play action with time, and then he's going to check down to Henderson, and Henderson just able to make it for a few yards beyond the 40-yard line. I think that's so much. I mean, it's easy to play quarterback when everything's going right. It's a lot harder to play quarterback when bullets are flying and don't have your best stuff. All it takes is one. I always reminded myself, next play, next play, next play. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. That's what you have to constantly be telling yourself throughout the course of a difficult start in any game you might play. They're just four of 11 on third downs. Third and seven. They back off, drop eight, and he throws it to the outside of the intended target as he was trying to get it to Dante Zanders. Just too much of a hurry right there. Trying to throw a hitch, he's got it. It's a piece of cake, it's a pitch and catch. It's a throw he makes in his sleep. It's the first throw you make when you're warming up for a game or a practice. He just rushed it, threw it too early. And as a result, Sanders wasn't ready for the football. Crawshaw hunting away. And Robinson, the fair catch at the 15 yard line. Greg, next Saturday, what do we got on ESPN College Football? Well, let's get it kicked off at noon. Georgia will head to South Carolina, take on the Gamecocks at 6 o'clock. Mississippi State heading to the bayou. LSU bouncing back nicely. Mississippi State in action later tonight. And then in the night slate, number 15 heads to College Station to see where the Aggies are going to be ranked. Anybody shall know. Look forward to talking about it all week on Always College Football on ESPN's YouTube channel. You do a great job with that podcast. Thanks, buddy. Love ball. Who doesn't love ball? Who doesn't love this kind of ball right here? As they go with the quick handoff to Robinson in the jet motion, but it was well tracked by that Florida front. Good play that time by Boone. He's been something tonight. There is Justice Boone. Had the big sack earlier. Just smashing Will Levis into the ground. I've been really impressed with this front throughout the course of the first two games, but did not look like they had the same level of intensity on that last drive. And this is a big one here for the Gators to get the ball back for their offense, which has been sputtering here for the better part of the last couple quarters. Final minute here of the third. Pick six is the difference in the margin on the scoreboard right now. Les Levis gives the smoke, and he just gets to the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and five. But down like this on third and five, the defense is thinking, hey, he's going to throw it to the sticks, five yards or so. I always love a double move. Mm -hmm. A little slant and go, and it looks like Kentucky's going to take the quarter. As Levis was going to the sideline for a minute. Over the right call, could take the air out of the balloon a little bit over the course of the quarter long break. But I'm dialing up a double move if I'm Kentucky on the first snap of the fourth quarter. A little slant and go. See if I can't get him to bite on something underneath. Catch him napping over the top. Adrian Smith had the play of the game to this point. The 65-yard pick six touchdown. Kentucky's on the road at the Swamp. Playing against a team that's got all the buzz. But they had the Jets of Smith going the other way. 
23-16, Cats on top as we head to the fourth quarter. Primetime, SEC under the lights. We are back, start of the fourth quarter. Will Levis and the Cats facing a third and five. Up a touchdown on Florida. They go inside and they get it with Magwood. Big play as he gets even more out to the 41-yard line. A good connection, Levis to Magwood on third and five for 21 yards, Greg. And what a catch, too, by Magwood. Had the big play earlier. Ball's just a touch low. Look at him extend, no problem, and then get upfield. Just a thing of beauty there from Magwood. Really nicely done. Excellent execution there by Kentucky. Two inside receivers clearing that lane. Magwood coming in, and the Cats on the go here. With a touchdown lead at the Swamp. A week after Florida dismissed a top 10 Utah team. Wright finds a seam and gets past midfield. Lavelle Wright as he goes ahead for nine yards, tackled by Perkins. Florida's really starting to feel it at the line of scrimmage as Kentucky is starting to really open it up. Second and one, shot down all day long. Hard play action, max protection. You think if you're a quarterback, absolutely, no matter what, don't care what the circumstances are, cannot take a sack. But you come back on third and one, even if there's a long foul ball, I'm throwing it deep here off heavy play action. They go high formation with Dingle as the fullback, right as the tailback on second and one. Let's see if they go play action and take advantage. They keep it on the ground with right, and he will move the chains again. Howell Ryland with the tackle. Hey, Greg, we were talking about the other day, right? Darian Kennard was the right tackle. He's off to the NFL. Dare Rosenthal was all SEC left tackle. Center's gone. So they just wanted to mix and match and see if they could get the best five on the field. It seems like as this game goes on, they're finally gelling with the offensive line and getting that run game to where it wants to be. And they've committed to it also. They've been really good. They've answered the challenge here in the second half. And you can tell that Florida's defensive front is starting to wear down a little bit as well. Right went for eight yards there. Fresh set of downs. And they'll stick with it. But this time, it is a tackle for a loss by Trey Dean. Let's get an update from Matt Barry. It's a funny week, too, in college football, isn't it? Sold out Swamp. Looking for their defense to step up against Levis and the Cats. And they go with the screen and they get to it right away. Devin Moore, who's an outstanding true freshman cornerback from Naples, Florida, with the tackle of Tavion Robinson. A great job there. Magwood trying to apply the block just way too late. Got to go straight to the outside, and Moore makes him pay. Excellent tackle in the open field. Third and 11. Make some noise. They have no problem doing that here. Pressure look from Florida. Nobody deep defensively. And it'll drop out. Levis on third and 11. Plenty of time to pick an option, and it's incomplete. Good work on the back end converging on Chauncey Magwood. It's Kamari Wilson and Dean right in there. Dangerous throw here from Levis. Just a touch late. As you see the receiver waiting for it, waiting for it. Needs to be on him right now if you're going to throw it there, right there. You'd love to put it on him. Just a touch late, a hitch too long. And a good close there by Trey Dean and the rest of the secondary. Jason Marshall involved, Wilson involved. And now they force the punt. Fifth punt of the night as Goodfellow trying to pin the Gators. And that'll go for the touchback. You have some tough nights in life, but it's how you respond that matters. How will Anthony Richardson respond right now? This is a 23 to 16 lead for the Cats. Young Anthony Richardson. He's thrown two picks. 
Look to check down, thinking about it, and then just guns it into the crowd. Tom McShay. You know, one thing I've noticed tonight with Richardson is everything seems to be on a line. Greg, you know, you've got to, as a quarterback, learn how to layer the ball and, and the better trajectory. Now, some of these throws require some, some heat, but it seems like every throw is like a 99-mile-an-hour fastball on a straight line. And I think, again, with more game experience, I'm not, I'm not you know, beating him down tonight for having a rough game. I'm just saying this, these are some of the reasons why Richardson needs more game experience. Second and ten. Richardson gets this complete as he goes to zipperer. And the tight end is going to have a first down for the Gators. Yeah, I think that's all part of the progression is understanding what throws require crazy heat. You want to throw catchable passes. Ultimately, you want to make sure it's easy on the wide receivers. And there have been a few times where he's added a few too much velocity on some of these throws tonight. Here's ETN, the freshman running back, and he is thrown back by Josiah Hayes. Junior from Mississippi he rotates into that excellent front seven for Kentucky. Alex Safari coming in defensively. No gain for ETN. Little brother had a good first half, had the touchdown, had the two point conversion. And Grandma Marie and his sister Danielle. Going crazy up in the stands, but right now this offense needs to find something. Second half, it hasn't been there. ETN's finding something there as he gets it out to the 40 yard line. It'll be third and three. Valentine with the tackle. Ooh, that was close. Sure was. He almost <laughs> broke it. They said, oh, Graham, Graham, oh see, Graham even knows Greg. Graham says, oh, that was close. Wasn't that it, Graham? Was three? Really close. Right here, your quarterback's struggling a little bit. Man, I'm not afraid to keep it on the ground. I mean, quarterback's not seeing the field great. Try him on a run. I mean, they ran it on a third and short last time and picked it up with ease. The box count's favorable. It doesn't look like it's going to be based on the flat top look you're getting from Kentucky. He's wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. That was J.J. Weaver as they packed that box, and Weaver comes up with a big play. He had a key interception last year in the win against Florida. And right there, I mean, they're just totally overloaded in the box. All out look, so many defenders close within the tackle box. As you see, let's see what Billy Napier decides to do. If nothing else, they're on their own 40 grand hard count. See if you can't steal one for free. Let's see. It's fourth and three. See if they can get him offside here. And a timeout is going to be used by Kentucky as Coach Stoops will talk it over. Florida kept the offense on the field on fourth down and three. You know, I thought it was a very good point in the conversation that you and Todd McShay just had about Anthony Richardson and the reality because he's one of these guys. It's tough to remember that it's only his third start because even last year when Emory Jones was here he had wow moments he had 75 yard runs 80 yard passes he had explosive plays last week you get the incredible two point conversion everybody's talking about but it's the day in day out right. down in distance plays making the easy plays simple that you really got to be refined with yeah I think it, it's all part of the maturation process sure. I mean this is so normal by the way for young players that just have crazy ability yeah. And, you know, it's a big reason why sometimes guys are like, well, I can't believe he wasn't playing. Well, Cam Newton, maybe as a freshman or sophomore, wasn't ready to play. And as a senior, he became ready, obviously. But it's all part of the maturation process. And a huge call here by Billy Napier. He must get the sense that his defense is really struggling to stop the run. So they might need to take it into their hands here on a critical fourth down. From their own 40-yard line with 8.41 to play. Fourth down and three. They're going for it. Richardson incomplete. Frazier's was the intended target. Carrington Valentine had coverage, and it is a turnover on downs at their own 40 yard line. And pretty good throw here by Anthony Richardson. Just better coverage. I mean, just off the charts good there. As you see, Valentine close, get that. Left arm out in front. Physical. Kind of draped. But I like the no call on a critical fourth down. Just very, very close. 
And an excellent coverage there by Valentine on the slant. What a tough stretch offensively it has been for Florida as the Kentucky defense has gotten to him. And now Smoke gets the edge. And with a blocker in front, Cavassier Smoke. He's down to the 22-yard line, a 17-yard run. And just beautiful right here, a pin and pull out and around. Excellent job getting on the edge. As Kentucky's been gashing them north and south between the tackles for most of the second half. Now they get smoke on the perimeter. And you have to think, maybe that's why Billy Napier went for it. He could sense that his defense was about out of gas, so he had to take it into his own hands. He's right there. Did not see Florida Gators pursuing like they did before. They'll go back to smoke to the other side. Trey Dean was able to get to him as well as Scooby Williams. The big blue wall. We we're talking about that offensive line for Kentucky. Where they find themselves. They did. Look at the third quarter. Look at the fourth quarter compared to the first half for the run game for Kentucky. Been a now they're leaning on the No doubt. And it's been a commitment to it as well. I mean, obviously, it's easy to commit to something that's working. But you can tell they're really starting to move and reestablish the line of scrimmage. This is the Kentucky offensive line that we've grown up with the last few years. Levis on second and eight. Going to throw it away. The third down. Scooby Williams was pressuring Levis. It's a big spot for Kentucky. You think about this series 31 straight losses to Florida. And then the breakthrough moment 2018, snapping the drought against Florida here in the swamp. And then a year ago, snapping Florida's 35 game road win streak up in Lexington. And now looking for back to back wins against the Gators. That hasn't happened since 1976 and 1977. It's a very different Kentucky football program, folks. They are steady, reliable, consistent, and they come to play. Third and eight. Florida was waiting on that. He was right. Couldn't find much. But we're under seven minutes to play. That's Mark Stoops. Billy Napier went for it on fourth down because he doesn't trust his defense. That right there is Mark Stoops knowing, hey, our defense is playing their tail off. We can settle for three here and feel pretty good about our positioning up six and a half, up nearly ten if he makes it with six and a half to play. Matt Ruffalo is second on Kentucky's all-time career list for field goal percentage made. This a 38-yard attempt. And that is no good. Florida's getting the ball back. Still only down a touchdown with over six minutes to play. Ruffalo. Just missed it. And Billy Napier says no good is good. In college football primetime presented by Subway here in the swamp where there is hope after the missed field goal. Joe, Greg, Todd, and Katie with you. And Florida with the ball. Naquan Wright. Nothing really there, just maybe a yard that time. And look, Greg, the second half offensive possessions for Florida. They've gone punt. They had the pick six go the opposite way against them. They've had punt and they have turnover on downs. Yeah, they have really struggled to put anything together. The offense has completely lacked rhythm. They haven't been very efficient running the football. They did that well at times in the first half. So it's really been a struggle so far. But with Anthony Richardson at quarterback, your best stuff's always one play away. He only has four yards rushing the ball. He's so dangerous with his legs. Second and nine gets it out quickly. Henderson trying to get the block. And it will be third down and five. Tyrell Agent. is just so well coached, man. The way they leverage the football, 
The corner knows exactly what to do on that play, and the safety comes in and cleans it up. So well coached are the Kentucky Wildcats. Massive third down here for Anthony Richardson. Who do you trust? They've gone in the direction of Shorter a few times. He's down here isolated and one-on-one. -on -one. They've gone to him on third down a few times. Let's see if they look his direction again. He's a six-foot-four target. Third down and five. Might be checking to a run based on those safeties being deep for Kentucky. Six-man box. There it is. Yeah, and there it goes the opposite way because Deion Walker, the true freshman from Detroit, said, not on my watch. Six six, three hundred and thirty pounds, and right in Naquan Wright's face. Wow! I mean, just absolutely tossed the center. I mean, the walk on's right there. He just gets thrown. There's absolutely nothing that Wright can do. And again, a fourth down from their side of the field, from their own twenty-four. Desperate times for Florida. Richardson on fourth and six sprint right gotta have it doesn't get it not even close another turnover on downs for Billy Napier's team. They try to roll to the right go with a little flood concept make it easy but the corner squats outside. Richardson feels that squatting corner. He doesn't want to throw his receiver into a blow up. Tries to hold him up. And the ball is just way off the mark. You have to put that right in the middle of the receiver's chest. He's trying to help him out. He doesn't want him to get a big collision there on the perimeter. But a great job of clouding the flood there by Kentucky. Just a beautiful play call from Brad White. And if you're Kentucky, you got to have a put away mentality here. They go short pitch to Tavion Robinson again. Dexter with the tackle. Mark Stoops, what a ride it has been and what history he could have. The immortal Bear Bryant was always the top coach in the all time list at Kentucky. Last week, Stoops came up with a win to tie Paul Bear Bryant as Kentucky's all time winningest coach. Come down here to the swamp to face the it team coming out of week one, number 12, Florida. And if you come away with this win, what a way to pass Bear Bryant in Kentucky history. What a way. Here's Cavassier Smoke. Changing directions, cutting back in, and well done to the 17 yard line. Avery Helm was able to get to him for the tackle, but we are under three minutes to go here in Gainesville. If you're Kentucky, I, I don't know how you risk throwing it right here. And the way your offensive line is starting to move, I'm handing it off again. Still allowing that clock to tick as low as I possibly can before I try to make it a two possession game. Levis is looking up at that play clock. Isn't that ironic here in Kentucky where there was a controversial moment from their past. Now they're bleeding it to try to come up with a win and move those chains. They will with Cavassier smoke and look at this. Does that ever define things. Everybody getting involved pushing the pile down to the five yard line for a first and goal. Just a great effort there by Cavassier smoke. And how about this Kentucky offensive line much maligned after week one questioned doubted they shuffle a few guys around insert the best five into the lineup and here they are knocking on the door and route to a potential game winning game ceiling touchdown. That big blue wall was just a big blue road grader on that last play. And after first down that's when Florida is going to start to burn those timeouts. Now it looks like Stoops called timeout there. We'll take the short break as Kentucky's got out the hammer and they're looking to put a nail in this thing.
Oh, Matt, twist my arm. Watching more good football than college football <laughs> final. That might That's be as good a up matchup as there is. Yeah, seriously, I can't you and I will be up refreshing and watching ball and then final <laughs> until 3 a.m. Got no problem with it. First and goal. Here's right. And they met him right at the line of scrimmage. Florida three timeouts remaining. And Florida's going to use the first of their three. Minute 38 remaining. Kentucky is knocking on the door. Billy Napier is hoping for some good luck to come his way. Take a short break with the timeout. To you by Xfinity, Greg. And it is Kentucky's defense. They've been off the charts good. Really starting at the really end of the second quarter when Wright made that play one-handed. And then, of course, a little later in the game, the pick six by Keaton Smith taking it back to the house off the miscommunication. The Kentucky defense has been phenomenal. And now second and goal off the timeout. Flag comes in as there was movement with Kentucky. False start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. Check it out. And of course he is the senior. Who they can really rely on. They kicked him out to left tackle. He was the Mayo Clinic Comeback Award winner. Well told story is life saving open heart surgery when he was a high school senior. And now a steady performer on this offensive line. Second and goal. By the way, just their second penalty tonight. Played clean football, he had the best chance to win. I could not believe how sloppy Alabama was with penalties today, by the way, Greg. <laughs> It's very much unrecognizable for someone that knows that program like the back of his hand. Second time out used by Florida. Hey, the U.S. Open Men's Championship is for Eastern tomorrow. Carlos Alcaraz, Casper Ruud, they're going at it to decide it. The 19-year-old Carlos Alcaraz, if you haven't seen him play, he is as fast, as athletic, as dynamic a new force in tennis as you will see. Just 19 years old, what an athlete. He's amazing. I mean, just amazing. Him and Berrettini are my guys. Oh. Those are my guys right now in tennis. Listen, I went over, Fowler and I went over to see him play at the Miami Open in March. We were sitting back on a Monday, like 11 a.m., watching Alcaraz. I was blown away, and he has been on this run ever since, and tomorrow he could become a U.S. Open champion. That was magnificent stuff he did last night deep into the night. Third down and goal coming off the timeout. Minute and a half to go here in the swamp. Kentucky looking to put this thing away. And they're just going to center it and try to seal it. Wise. Wise. No, no need to do anything cute. Have seen errors this part of the field in the last week. Well, you try to get a little bit too creative, and it results in a negative play. That's I'm sorry. What are, you, what are you discussing? I'm here? discussing the uh, the game on Sunday. <laughs> Florida State pitch. LSU. It resulted in a fumble that gave LSU life, but it's been far from a slam dunk for Kentucky tonight. The snapping operation has been a little bit hit or miss. Cade DeGraw senior, a little low on the field goal snap, a little high on the punt. So you can't take anything for granted as you saw him also Buffalo miss one wide left just ever so slightly to the left. This one about five yards deeper than an extra point really all about the snap and the hold here more than anything else. Levis has turned away. He wants this badly can't even watch rough world from just 26 yards after Will Levis put that ball right in the middle. Good snap, good hold, and a great drive from Matt Ruffalo, the senior from Ohio. And Will Levis says smiles and waves and loving the way this has gone in the second half. Great snap, great hold. Split the middle. Ruffalo <laughs> says bye-bye. Kentucky is hoping to say bye bye to Gainesville with a win here in 84 seconds. That would snap a long drought. It has been a long time since Kentucky has back to back wins against Florida. 
What a gutsy performance from Kentucky. Now, not completely over now. If you're Billy Napier, you're telling your quarterback, all right, we got to get in the field goal range. That's the play. And then hopefully get an onside kick, take a shot at the end zone. So the first points are the field goal. That's what you have to get up here on this first two-minute drive. Then you kick an onside kick and potentially throw one towards the end zone. That guy right there is trying to become Kentucky's all-time winningest coach. In just a minute and 24 seconds away from passing Bear Bryant, Mark Stoops. It wasn't easy in those first few years. Brick by brick, building this thing with a lot of great support and a lot of fight in him. ETN on the return. Keeps his footing to the 25. Katie. Well, Greg, I think gutsy is a great word for it. It wasn't a pretty first half. Mark Stoops was clearly not happy when I spoke to him, but this is a team that embodies being the underdog. They don't mind being overlooked. It's just who they are at this point. You guys mentioned blue collar. They've stayed the course over here this entire second half, and this is a big time win for them to start out 2-0. and Massive. Absolutely massive. And it would be really interesting, I think, to see how the pollsters react to this performance. This place was rocking. Florida was as hot as anybody as far as the national narrative is concerned. It's about time you put some respect on Kentucky's name. As for the offense, it has sputtered as Kentucky's defense has cranked it up this entire second half. Anthony Richardson downfield and that was well beyond the intended target Valentine the cornerback for Kentucky had the best shot at it Greg Florida's last points you know when they were the high snap over the Kentucky punters head that resulted in the safety 412 in the second quarter that's the last time Florida put points on the board Wow just really haven't been able to manufacture anything offensively here in the second half of this football game Richardson again comes to the other side that was denied by Kedron Smith. He was looking for Justin Shorter. Kentucky has outscored Florida 13 zip in the second half. It has been a long time since back to back wins 1976 1977. 31 straight losses at one point Kentucky had to Florida and then the last four years two wins and now closing in on back to back wins against the Gators third and ten Richardson pressured and just has to underhand it ahead to Johnson who is taken down at the 27 yard line. And here's yet another fourth down for the Gators. They had back to back drives with turnovers on downs. And Richardson is going to get that through a defender's hands and into the hands of Henderson to convert there. So 10 yards there. And as we're 27 seconds and counting down remaining, Florida has exhausted their timeouts. As Richardson will throw it incomplete. But those two interceptions, Greg, Jordan Wright, the spectacular one handed interception where you could hear the thud. It was thrown at such close range, you could hear the thud. That led to a touchdown, and Kedron Smith, the pick six. Game changed. Game changed. And the first one is totally forgivable. It's just. A quick lapse in judgment and a phenomenal defensive play. The second one is one that has to get corrected. Got to always be on the same page with the intended wide receiver. And if you guys aren't, the corner will be, and he'll take it back to the house. Richardson is just going to check down to Zipperer. Mark Stoops receiving congratulations about to officially be Kentucky's all time winningest coach a program that had such struggles for so many years and for so many of those years 
that defined with matching up with this program, Florida, who during that stretch were the kings of the SEC East, with all the glory under Spurrier, and then years later with Tebow and company, and now Kentucky, when they match up with Florida, three out of the last five. As that'll do it here in the swamp. And Stoops is Kentucky's all-time winningest coach, passing Bear Bryant. And Kentucky, for the first time since 1976-77, has back-to-back -back wins over the Gators. That's a good, solid road win against the team that was red hot and number 12 in the country. Let's go down to Katie and a soaking but smiling Coach Stoops. Coach Stoops, I know it wasn't pretty in the first half, but what did you think of the response in the second? Uh, I thought it was a thing of beauty. No, uh, we overcome a lot of adversity. And, you know, you don't do that unless you're a, an experienced, tough football team. And we know we have that mentality. We know every each and every week it's going to be a challenge, and we respect Florida, but we we're ready to play. I know you shy away from personal accomplishments, but you just passed Bear Bryant for all-time winningest coach in Kentucky history. What does that mean to you? Uh, fortunate, fortunate. A lot of great players, coaches have been through here. To be able to persevere through this difficult conference, I have nothing but respect, you know, and appreciation. Congratulations. Thank you. Test. That's a coach who's humble with an edge. When he becomes the all-time winningest coach, he simply says he's fortunate. 26 to 16, Kentucky comes on the road and takes care of Florida. For Greg, Katie, and Todd, I'm Joe Tessator saying enjoy the rest of your night. You got Baylor and BYU still set to come your way. Cats on top in the swamp. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the Southeastern Conference.